Hello there, finishing my trio of 2021 favourites videos with bath and body and hair and lips and hands and nails. The colour coded rows are back and I'll be talking you through my standout products in those categories. You can catch my 2021 skincare favourites with my complete morning and evening skincare routines and my 2021 makeup favourites linked below was the longest video I've ever made. A lot to get through here too and lots of reappearances so I'll keep each section fairly short and sweet which is sort of the opposite of what this group of products represents overall. They're the taking your time, treating yourself, enjoying scents and textures types of self-care moments. I hope you get to have a few minutes of calm while you watch. Beginning with baths. I moved at the start of 2021 and very sadly no longer have a bath, struggling to function as a human being. So when I do get to have a bath very occasionally, there's only one product I want to use. Olvirum bath oil has been my favorite for several years now. It comes in a mini version. This adorable baby bottle is actually enough for three baths. You really don't need much, so it's great to take away with you. The way this scent fills your bathroom with eucalyptus, lavender, verbena, lemon, lime, geranium, and rosemary. Smells better than any spa I've ever been to. Swapping to the shower with an exfoliator and beautiful body wash scents. This video is heavy on Necessaire, but that's how much I love their entire range. The body exfoliator in Eucalyptus is another repeat favorite, a satisfying mix of chemical and physical exfoliants. So it feels like you're getting a good scrub with little bits of pumice and charcoal, but it's not too coarse and it lathers, which I love in a body exfoliant. All three of Necessaire's body wash scents sit in the front row of my shower caddy and I just pick a different one depending on my mood. Eucalyptus is always enjoyable as an Aussie, sandalwood is a bit more sultry and warm but not too heavy, and bergamot is their uplifting citrus option. A smooth gel that turns into a luxurious foam, the scents are realistic but not overpowering, and they now have big refill bottles. You can find my Necessaire code below got to get that sense of escapism wherever you can these days and for me it's often through scent memories. I discovered Blind Barber's Lemongrass Tea Body Wash in hotels in New York back in 2018 and 2019 and loved it so much I brought this home. It's described as a calming light lemon scent with a touch of fresh cut grass. Very refreshing. Then Ren's Moroccan Rose Otto Body Wash takes me on a short shower trip back to Morocco. You all know how much I love rose scented anything, finally planning a perfume video this year I promise, but this body wash isn't your usual sweet or sugary rose, it's much more earthy like a lightly spiced rose tea or dried rose petals. There's a code for Ren's US website below. Three leaders in the land of body lotion, shocking, Necessaire's body serum and body lotion are here again. The serum might actually have snuck out in front for me as a favourite last year. It's just like a hydrating, cooling hyaluronic acid face serum, so it just sinks right into your body, disappears, and my skin feels so silky from that alone. Then if I want to lock in that moisture and give my limbs a cuddle, the body lotion is a creamy, medium weight formula that takes that soft sensation to another stratosphere, the softest, most supple feeling that lasts. I know so many of you have become obsessed with it too, my 10% code below can be reused, and Necessaire recently launched at Space NK if you're in the UK. A new addition was the Sand and Sky Tasmanian Spring Water Wonder Body Lotion. This is related to the Juicy Splash Serum from my skincare favourites. Really lightweight, the consistency is almost halfway between a serum and a cream, so this absorbs quickly and comes in a bundle with the face serum I love. Both of Necessaire's formulas were completely fragrance free, so sometimes I like mixing it up with this sweet, zingy, citrusy scent. Not the coolest category, but something we use every day, deodorant. My Necessaire deodorant success story continued. I was more into sandalwood last year and eucalyptus the year before. Doesn't perfectly match the scent of their other sandalwood products because the ingredients change the scent, but it's actually more about neutralizing odor, so you sort of end up smelling like nothing. Then late last year, Necessaire's new deodorant gel formula landed in my letterbox before the official launch in mid-January, and it completely blew me away. This liquid gel is much thinner than the cream, so it feels really light, 
cool, dries quickly, and the rollerball dispenses an ideal amount of product so you can layer it but never get in a mess. There are a few hair care brands in my shower, but one easily outnumbered the rest. I explored more of Christophe Robin's range, which was revamped last year with new packaging, but the same salon-inspired formulas I've been a fan of for many years. Love his hydrating range, purifying range, but for the second half of 2021, this trio is basically what I reached for every time I washed my hair, which is every three to four days. I've been repurchasing Christophe Robin's cleansing purifying scrub for the past five years now. A really famous formula with great chunks of sea salt and an uplifting salty scent, but it's not all about grit. It lathers so nicely in place of your shampoo when you want a really thorough deep clean to soothe your scalp. I'd always heard great things about Christophe Robin's regenerating mask, but couldn't have been more impressed when I started using this last year. I massage a little bit into my scalp and ends, leave it for five minutes, then feel startled every single time by just how buttery soft and smooth my hair is when I rinse it. It feels silky, but not heavy or weighed down at all. This is my third bottle of Christophe Robin regenerating serum. A couple of pumps of this creamy serum massaged into the ends of damp hair and smooth over the top before blow drying, protects my hair from heat and makes it soft and sleek, but it's weightless. I don't feel like I have any product in my hair. I've got a great ChristopheRoban.com discount below if you're shopping from the US, UK or Australia. Lots of different hair tools to talk about, so I'll split it up into everyday brushes, styling tools and blow dry brushes. I've been using Tangle Teasers as my main hairbrush for years. They're great on wet or dry hair, nice and comfy fit in the palm of your hand for more control. The Abitha Hair Rose Scented Detangling Comb was really fun to use for a change. The rose scent is a nice touch, but it's not strong unless you're right up close and it doesn't really scent my hair. Two devices I reached for regularly. The GHD Curve Soft Curl Tong is something I've had for years. Really nice to create loose, messy, under done waves on longer or shorter hair, had a big summer chop recently. I'm not skilled in the styling department, but this always works for me. I keep it really simple and don't use the clip. I just wrap small sections of hair around the barrel away from my face. I've been happily coupled up with the Dyson Supersonic Hairdryer since 2017. A big beauty investment, but it is the best hairdryer I've ever used anywhere, and I can't imagine swapping to another anytime soon. So much quicker, quieter, lighter to hold, smoother results, easy to change attachments, and it looks so sleek and stylish. I got really into round blow dry brushes. Abitha hair is a favorite amongst celebrity hairstylists, including Chris McMillan, the man behind Jennifer Aniston's Relaxed Waves. Can't pretend I've mastered Jen's look at home, but I really enjoy their CC4 brush. I find hollow ceramic brushes like this much easier to wrap around and glide through the hair while styling, and the bouncy cork handle is very comfy. The Olivia Garden Ceramic 45mm brush was recommended by my lovely hairdresser, a master of the round brush blow dry. I'm not getting anywhere close to the magic she works, but it's been fun to play with this to create some soft waves at home following good old YouTube tutorials. Christophe Robin's blow dry hair brush isn't as easy to wrap the hair and pull through if I'm trying to create waves. Again, I'm a beginner, so I stick to ceramic brushes for that, but this is what I reach for if I just want a smooth, straight, straight straightforward blow dry. Dry Bar's Hold Me Hair Clips were the best Sephora points perk a couple of years ago. I use them every single time I dry my hair to section it off. Bit of a problem that my cat thinks they belong to her and she hides them from me, so I just have to hide them first. Can you tell I'm a Lano Lips fan? A few of their formulas here and a couple of old favourites. Lano Lips Golden Dry Skin Salve is in the lips section, but it's really an excellent all-rounder and a firm 2021 favourite. This intense healing honey, lanolin and vitamin E ointment was a huge help after a couple of cooking and curling iron burns. I avoided any blistering, scabbing or scarring by slathering this on. It's great on super dry cuticles, super dry lips, anywhere you need. I think I've tried all but one of the Lano Lips 101 ointment flavors over the years, but Coconutter dominated the little bowl of lip balms on my desk last year. The combination of lanolin, vitamin E, and coconut oil coats your lips and has a great tropical flavor. 
in my bathroom in the morning, I loved swiping on the Lanolips Coconutter Lano Stick. Not much left now. This 100% natural twist up bullet has a neater, lighter texture than their thicker ointment tubes, but it still has a cushiony, conditioned feel, so it's great to prep my lips pre makeup. You didn't think my Terry Bomb de Rose would miss out, did you? I keep a pot of this luxurious balm by my bed, it's not going anywhere buttery and rich with a beautiful rosy scent. A little bit goes a long way so I get the best results by really working it in with my fingertip and rubbing my lips together. Then the balm rolling around at the bottom of every bag, Blistex lip conditioner stick, nice and simple to use on the go, it works a treat and contains SPF, don't forget to protect those lips. The hand care routine I followed while watching TV or winding down most nights was a heavier cuticle treatment, which could be a bit sticky if left on its own, but then a lighter hand cream blends it all in and absorbs well. Dior's Daily Nutritive Serum was such a treat to use. It's called a serum, but it's really a cuticle oil in a neat tube with a brush applicator, so it's fun to paint on. Dior's Apricot Nail Cream has been around since the 60s. It's an iconic mani pot with a sweet apricot scent, much richer and thicker, so you do have to do more massaging to really work it into the skin around your nails. Then the lighter hand creams. Olive and June Hand Serum is the lightest I've ever tried. It's fragrance free and has a lovely thin texture, so it's my favorite desk hand cream because it absorbs instantly without sliding around on your keyboard. I'll leave an Olive and June code below. Necessaire's hand cream was the other tube in this cuticle then whole hand process. It's fragrance free as well, like their body hydrators, and has a light creamy texture, so it's fast absorbing, but leaves my hands feeling so soft, comfortable, and nourished. I did have a heavier hand highlight too. Fenty Skin's Hydra Reset Intensive Recovery Hand Mask launched in October and as a tester of all hand cream textures it intrigued me. This has a thick gel cream texture that really coats your skin and leaves a veil, so only apply before bed. You don't need much at all to feel that filmy coating, but I prefer the results if I really massage it in then quickly brush the front and backs of my hands on my legs or arms so the coated feel is gone, you're just left with super silky skin. A final burst of colour at this nail polish party, two accidental colour themes happening in my favourite shades, pretty pastels for spring summer and deeper tones for autumn winter. This is day 8 of this current at home mani by the way, shorter nails always help and you can find more tips in my tutorial which I'm planning to update this year. Olive and June Cockatoo was the soft, light, pinky lilac I loved from their spring collection. Essie Go Ginza is an ever so slightly brighter pale purple I wore a lot this last summer. Olive and June Pink Sands was a sun bleached pale pink for spring. It's so cool, there's almost a touch of lilac to it. Then a Rosie Huntington Whiteley inspired shade. OPI Bubble Bath, a classic soft pink. Chanel Rose Confidentielle was an autumnal soft rosy brown that's just a touch warmer than my next returning favourite. Olive and June LD was a bottle I loved in 2020 and 2021. Anytime I feel like a berry manny it's what I go back to. Essie Bed Rock and Roll amps things up. You might remember this great ready brown from my autumn makeup edit last year. And Olive and June Obsessed was my dark polish obsession. A perfect deep vampy shade. That Olive and June code is below. That's a wrap on my 2021 favourites. Thank you for watching. A big thank you if you watched all three instalments. I'd love to hear which one was your favourite. What were the bath, body, hair, hand or nail products that stood out in your self-care rituals last year? Please let me know your favourite scents, textures or polish colours. Which beauty category do you enjoy exploring to relax or spend some time looking after yourself? You deserve it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.